This video is about planning the elementary math lessons that are part of NTPA Task 4. You're going to plan a sequence of three lessons that allows students to develop all three of the main competencies in math, procedural skills or fluency, conceptual understanding, and application or problem solving. In NTPA, they call that problem solving. Here's an example. I've taken the number and operations in base 10 standard, which says use place value understanding and properties of operations to add and subtract. And the indicator is to fluently add and subtract within 100 using strategies based on place value, property of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. I've converted that into an activity, which really just rewords the standard and then I have thought very carefully about the three aspects of this problem. So the conceptual understanding is the students are able to accurately change the number in the tens and hundreds columns when adding. That's, that's the main concept that I want them to learn here. But they also need computational or procedural fluency. They need to be able to add and subtract ac accurately. If they can't do the procedural fluency, then they're not going to get the correct answer, even if they conceptually understand uh, what they're supposed to be doing. And then finally, problem solving. And you can think of problem solving or, or application as, are they able to follow the steps to solve the problem? Because as math gets harder and harder, the steps in a problem get more and more tricky, really more and more sophisticated. So they have to be able to follow the, the steps in a problem to be able to solve it. So in order to accurately solve problems, students need all three of these things. This is the fundamental understanding of how to teach math. So we're gonna use this to develop our lesson plans. So the trick to uh, planning good lessons is to start with good objectives. And, it, and a good objective should have three parts. The first part is the target behavior that you want to have happen. The second part is the conditions under which the students are going to do that behavior. And the third part of your objective is what is your criteria for success? What, what's passing, in other words? Here's three examples. The first one, students will be able to solve word problems using dimes, nickels, and pennies. That's my target behavior, that they're able to solve word problems using money. The conditions under which the behavior occurs is to use plastic coins. I think that that's going to support them to be able to do the, the problems better. And then my criteria success is that they'll get 80% of the questions correct. Here's another example. Students will be able to compare two decimals to the thousands. So that's the target behavior. And they are going to use um, the greater than, equal than, and less than symbols to record the results of the comparisons. That's the conditions under which the behavior is going to occur. And again, my criteria for success is 80% accuracy of 10 questions. Here's another one. Students will be able to represent 10 real world problems. So that's my target behavior. And they will do that by graphing points in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane and interpret the coordinate values of points. And again, I'm going to expect 80% accuracy. So we want to have three aspects to our, our, our uh, objective. When you've developed those three aspects, pretty much you've got uh, your lesson plan figured out. And then you just add details to the lesson plans. So you want to create a sequence now of three lessons. So if you've written your objective in this three-part system, this is going to be a lot easier because you change one or more of the of the three parts. In this example, I'm changing only the target behavior. So in the first uh, lesson, the students will be able to solve world, word problems using dimes, nickels, and pennies. Using plastic coins with 80% accuracy is going to stay the same. In the second lesson, they're going to be able to solve word problems involving quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So I've added quarters. I've made it a little bit more challenging because I've increased the target behavior. And in the third lesson, now they're gonna solve word problems involving dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. Again, I've changed the target behavior. I've kept the plastic coins the same and I've kept the accuracy the same. Now I could have written this three lesson sequence with just dimes, nickels, and pennies, 
and I could have had 80% accuracy in the first lesson, maybe 85 in the second lesson, and 90% in the third lesson, because with more practice, I'm going to expect that my students will get better at that. Another thing that I could do is change the conditions. Perhaps in the first one, they can use plastic coins and, and um, counters. Maybe in the second lesson, they'll just use the plastic coins, and maybe in the third lesson, they will only use a written response and not have the plastic coins. So any one of those three can change, and that's how you're gonna sequence your lessons. Once you've got the sequence thought out, you're going to use this template. It's called the Learning Segment Overview. That's the title of it um, in, the, in the EdTPA files. And you just are gonna cut and paste your information here. You're gonna put in the central focus, which is just the, um, the overall idea that they're getting at. That'll come from your standard. You wanna start with the standard. The way to begin this process is to pick a standard that you're gonna use and one of the indicators for that standard, and then create a central focus from that. And then you'll put in your learning objectives, the instructional strategies and learning tasks, and the formative and summative assessments. This is what it might look like. The, you're only allowed to have two pages total, so you don't need a lot of detail here. But you can see I started with the second grade standard number and operations in base 10. And there's the standard, I put that in. And then you'll see I, I took the number five indicator and I used that as the central focus. So our, our state standards are pretty good. You can pretty much use that, that indicator as your central focus. You might have to simplify it a little bit, especially in the upper grades. Sometimes they have multiple things in the standards and you're only gonna teach part of it. So what I've done here is that I've changed the target behavior in my three lessons. So the first lesson, they're going to focus on place on using place value as a strategy. In the second lesson, they're going to use place value and property of operations. And then in the third lesson, they're going to use place value, property of operations, and the relationship between addition and subtraction. And you'll see that's my uh, three-part learning objective there. Make sure you have the three-part learning objective. That's very important. And um, in your instructional strategies and learning tests, this is what you're used to. Put in your anticipatory set where you review and get them ready for the lesson, modeling guided practice and independent practice. And then a, summit, a formative assessment is almost always going to be you observing them during guided practice. Maybe in the upper elementary grades, you could do an exit ticket or something like that, but usually it's just observation. And then your summative assessment just means what comes at the end, and that should be your independent practice. So here I've got students are completing 10 addition and subtraction problems independently. Here's another example. Um, this is for first grade. The students will be able to analyze and compare data, a data shown in a picture graph when each symbol represents one. And again, you can see how she put in anticipatory set, the direct instruction, the guided practice, the uh, independent practice, and the formative and summative assessments. So that's about the amount that you need. You, you wanna come to filling up most of the second page, maybe not all of it, but most of the second page. So again, review, before you uh, finalize your lesson plans, make sure that you yourself, that you can identify what is the conceptual understanding that students need in your lesson, what is the procedural or computational fluency that they need, and what is the problem solving, what are the problem solving steps or the application? How do they apply that to actual problem solving? You need to know those three things before you move on to creating your assessment.